So this morning, I would like to ask you, who of you have seen this picture before? Anyone? Anyone? One person. Okay, you may not talk. Have you so you've seen it before? Okay. Who who likes it? Eh? You don't like it. I painted it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you still don't like, I like your honesty. I like someone like that. <laughs> what do you think of it? Would you hang it in your house? One would. You wouldn't. I wouldn't. Would you? Anyone? Who would hang it in their house? Please put up your hand. One, two, three people. Interesting. Okay, the next slide. Who of you like that painting or have seen it before? Anyone seen it before? In the preschool. <laughs> you, who of you like that painting? Roger. Who would put it in the house? <laughs> You've seen it in your preschool. I think I also did. I'm sure. <laughs> So none of you would put that in your house? Interesting. What value would you put to that painting? Not much. Dustbin? Would you possibly put it in the dustbin? You'd give it to an enemy. Interesting. Depends on the artist. Okay. What do you think the value of that painting is? Huh? How, mu how much would you pay for it? Ten rand. Ten rand. Oh, you wouldn't waste your money. No, no, not why even one cent. <laughs> Depends on the artist. Very interesting. You wouldn't buy it for its beauty. How much do you think it was sold for? Hmm? Can I tell you? But you won't believe me. Do you believe me? 1.5 billion rand. 1.5 billion. Old Pollock, Jackson Pollock. Can you believe it? In 2006, it was sold for 1.5 billion. That painting. The one above that, can you go back to that slide? This, Paul, this is a Paul Cezanne painting, the best loved of all his paintings, and it's called The Card Player. It was sold for 2.6 billion rand. Who thinks that's sick? You could do that yourself. And the minute I think I can do it myself, then I th they think it's not art. I don't think it's... You know, I, ne I know some people think, but that's art. And, well. and, and we just have to respect that. It was sold for two point over 2.6 billion. Because... I don't think many of you can read what the figure is. Two billion, oh, I don't even know, it's a bit difficult, I simplified it. Can you believe it? Can you comprehend? Hey? So if you think of that, that someone would be willing to pay that, doesn't that show you that money is actually valueless, meaningless? There's no real value to money. Hang it on a wall. <laughs> that's, that's what people buy them for. Because they see it as an investment. 
Now I want to ask you, what do you value as your most valued investment? What is your most valuable investment in life? Hmm? Your Bible, okay. Your time that you spend with the Lord. Your salvation, very interesting. Family and your relation. So my question and the, my title this morning is, can't find it here, it's disappeared. What is the value of your salvation? What value do you put on your salvation? Have you ever thought of that? Have you thought of what do I value? What do I value do I put on salvation? Spending eternity with Christ Jesus as opposed to hell. What value do you place on that? Interesting. Somebody's life. You can't put money onto that? Someone's special life, okay. Did all of you see the red Ferrari in the back here? That brand new one? In none of you. That, that, that red Ferrari. Did none of you see it? What would you do if I said to you, I'm going to give every single one of you an incredible gift? It's a Ferrari back there. But you have to pay me one rand. What would you say to me? You would happily you would pay, happily pay me the rand and find a buy. Okay, interesting. You would ask for a green one. You would want it to be repainted. Okay. What's the catch? What's the catch? Okay. He wants, a dozen. <laughs> he wants a dozen. Okay. You can do with it what you want, isn't it? Becomes yours then. What else? What would the rest of you do? Is that all you would ask? Yeah, we think differently. I'm amazed. Hello? What is the catch? Someone already said that. Is there anything else? Where did I get the money? Don't worry about where I robbed the bank. You take it down the end one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So would I, but I might sit in Chucky. <coughs> you... <laughs> <laughs> First with the money in your bank account in the proof. Okay, very interesting. What would you ask? You know what I would ask? I would say, excuse me, Ian. You said to me you're going to give me a gift. Yet you want me to pay you one rand. <laughs> no. No. Anything that someone has to purchase or pay something to or contribute to is no longer a gift. Hello? Irrespective, it's very cheap now, but it's still no longer a gift. You've had to buy it. Any s when someone says they give you a gift, but there's any strings attached, it's no longer a gift. Then it becomes a bribe. Hello? There's a difference. When God gives a gift, it is a free gift. So my first point this morning is the value of salvation is unspeakable. You cannot, we cannot fathom it. We cannot understand the greatness of salvation. Listen to this in Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. In other words, a gift is given and you cannot add anything to it. In other words, it's not salvation plus. It is not salvation plus works or plus do's and don'ts. You're given salvation as a free gift. 
That's why it is by faith. You receive it by faith. By thank you. I don't, if I give you, you a gift and you say, Oh wow, uh, how much do I owe you? I, and I say, but excuse me, I, I said it is a gift. It is, it is insulting when you say, what do I owe you for this? Hello? Hello? If I have to give you a present and say, this is a gift from me to you, and say, oh, how much is it? How much must I pay you for it? Would your heart be hurt? Why? Because you're giving it a gift out of love. Unless you've got strings attached or false motive. Interesting, hey? It says, yeah, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And the minute we accept salvation as this unspeakable gift, it is more valuable than the play play Ferrari, which you cannot see. Forgive me for lying, there's no Ferrari there. But I would love to give you all one. <laughs> if I have to give you one, I'm going to give you a dinky toy. That will be the catch. It is more valuable than that Cezanne painting. Hello? Amen. However, if I had to bring that, uh, that Cezanne painting right now with uh, 2.6 billion rand, and I said, right, who of you would like this painting as opposed to salvation? How many of you are going to choose this painting? You'll stick with salvation. Interesting. So you think salvation is worth more than 2.6 billion rand? Who would choose the painting? You try to work some time. <laughs> You know, Roger, I would expect you to say that. <laughs> Do you understand? We need to put things in perspective because most of us, most of the world have got the whole thing upside down. We've forgotten the value of our salvation. Who of you sell your soul trying to accumulate wealth? Salvation. Riches. Our salvation was motivated by nothing that you and I did. It was motivated by the heart of God's love for you and I. So you can do nothing more than just say thank you, for it is by faith. May you never forget that truth. Galatians 3 verse 10 to 14 says, All who rely on observing the law are under a curse. In other words, all of those that are under this, I have to do this, I cannot do that. The minute you're under that, you're under a curse. In other words, I don't do things because I have to, I do things because I want to. I love you, Lord Jesus, and I live according to these set of principles or these truths. Because I choose to, because I love you. Not because I'm forced to by law. Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. If you want to try and live by a set of rules and regulations and try to adhere to a certain set of regulations, you are now stumped. Clearly no one is justified before God by the law. Because the righteous will live by faith and faith alone. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is, it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might, be, might come <coughs> to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise. Of the Spirit. Wow. How magnificent is that? It 
sadly, all religions do not to lead to God. They do not. And if I would not be bold enough to tell you that there's only one way to the Father, I would be lying to you. And I would be an heretic. I would not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if any of you claim to be Christians, but you say there are many ways back to God, you do not know God. And you are certainly not a Christian. For Jesus said, there's only one way. You either accept it or you reject it. And the consequence is either eternal salvation or eternal hell. Condemnation. Torment. Those are the two options. There is no third or fourth or fifth option. I said there, we obtain cheaply. So I said what we obtain cheaply, we normally esteem lightly. If you had to get that painting, let's say you were at an auction and you bought that painting for one rand, would you put it with million cameras and infrared things on your wall, would you? No. If you knew it was 2.6 billion, would you? Have it highly insured and all the infrared lights, there, would you then? Eh? Hey? What about your salvation? What do you and I do to cherish the salvation, the great salvation that we have in Christ Jesus? And, I, and I'm sharing this because I feel that we in the church at large have become accustomed to, well, died on the cross for me, thank you, let's take communion. We, we no longer grasp the great price that was paid for our salvation. For many of us, it is almost valueless. It's just one of those things. Hello? I think we forget the price that Jesus paid. What would you say, other than your salvation, is the greatest thing of value to you? Come on. What is the most valuable thing to you? Second to your relationship with God. Let's not go down there. Let's for a minute. What would you say is the most valuable thing to you? Family? My wife and my children. And if I had to give my child up for you, and you just casually thank you, you know, and you, there's not an eternal gratitude for the rest of your days, I would be hurt in my heart. And think, why did I bother? Wouldn't you think that? I wonder how God sometimes thinks. He gave His one and only Son. And we must never forget the cost. Not, a, not just a stupid painting that was <laughs> different color. <laughs> boom, there you go. It was not that. It was a life. And it wasn't a Wicked life, it was a pure life, yet he gave it for you and I. Never forget the value of our salvation is unspeakable. It is high, what value do you put on it? Hmm? Can you put any value on it? May you never forget the price he paid. Secondly, the value of salvation, I believe, is our lives. <coughs> now we're going to fall into a trap. If you really are grateful for Jesus Christ giving his life for you, really, genuinely, how should you live? Hmm? Someone that really loves God and is grateful, how should they live? 
not under condemnation, okay? Freedom. Listen to this. Matthew 10, 37 to 39 says, Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me, please note this is Jesus speaking, he's not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me, is not worthy of me. What do you value highest in your life? Your husband and your children, or your wife and your children, right? Very interesting. And anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The value that we should put on our salvation is our total life. If you really value the salvation that you have, as you said, all of you, more than 2.6 billion of this Cezanne painting, you valued it more. That means you should be willing to give up your life for him. For he gave his life for you. And in gratitude you should be willing to give your life for him. Greater love is no man than this, than he lay down his life for a friend. And Jesus is our friend, not our enemy. We should be willing to give our lives for him. That's why our, what we esteem incredibly valuable, and the most precious thing second to God is my wife and my children. But my love for them should be of basically, in, it should be almost insignificant. It should almost look like I hate them in comparison to my love for God. That's what that scripture is saying. It is not saying now I'll treat your family with disdain and hate them. And that's not what it's saying. It's saying we should be so in love with God and so show our love to Him and devotion to Him that it looks like we hate our family. Then we really value salvation. Then we really value God. Then we love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And until then, I don't know if we do. Saul had a half a heart for God. He was incredibly wise, incredibly wealthy, but he allowed those to steal the value of his relationship with God from him. May we allow nothing to steal our love for God from us. Matthew f uh, 13, verse 45, 45, it says the following in 46. <coughs> Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. He went and bought it. If you thought, if you believe that your salvation is worth more than anything on this planet, you should be willing to pay any price to keep it. If there's anything distracting you, that's why the Bible says, if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Etc., etc. Anything that causes you to place your relationship with God and the gift of salvation in second place, get that out of your life or change your priorities or your belief system. Acts 20, verse 22, it's, uh, 24, it says, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me, says Paul. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Wow. This guy is a manier. In the, in the kingdom of God, he's a manier. Don't, don't, don't you, when you read what Paul says, just look and say, wow. 
He understands what it means to have full devotion. <coughs> I consider my life worth nothing. You have no family, no distraction. Do you consider everything else in life actually meaningless? Right, and it's the same with, that's why, why God says, I want you to tithe. Not because you have to. You tithe because he doesn't want, he wants to make sure that in your heart, the finances never become an issue. In other words, God can say to give everything and you'll say, Yabas. Why? Because he's the Lord of everything. The minute you do not tithe, finances will become an idol in your life, period. And it is an idol in your life. That's why God says, tithe. And you don't do it because I have to. I do it because I love God and I want to see His kingdom come and established here on earth, just as it is in heaven. Okay. Then we read in Matthew 12, verse 30, it says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. You either gather with Him, tell people about Christ Jesus and His salvation, or you scatter. <coughs> So may we never forget the value of our salvation. It requires our life. Total devotion. Thirdly, the value of salvation cannot be denied. No one can deny the value of salvation. I don't think, I think anyone on this planet would pay everything they have. Forget that 2.6 billion, that's Mickey Mouse money. I think they would pay gazillions, as Roger says. Not trillions, gazillion, billion, whatever you want to put it down as the biggest figure, which there isn't. Any figure to stay out of hell. Isn't it? If people really believe that there was a hell, which they will find out there is, they would pay anything, but it will be too late before they had the opportunity. That is why God says, choose this day whom you will serve. The value of salvation cannot be denied. Listen to this, Hebrews 2 verse 1 to 4. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. And much of the church is starting to drift away. They forsake the gathering of the bread. They don't give. They don't care, etc., etc. Verse 2. For if the message spoken by angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? You will not. If you ignore the salvation that God has provided through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not escape. This salvation which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles and, and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will and many more. So if you ignore such a great salvation and you deny this great salvation, you will pay. And you need to tell people this truth. I need to be willing to tell people this truth. Why? Because I love them. Not because I have to. Because I don't want to see them burning in hell. So you and I cannot deny the great salvation that you and I have. It is worth more than everything on this planet. What an incredible value. Point four. 
The value of salvation cannot be matched. Not by anything. I don't believe that you and I are called to protect God. And I want to encourage you, please don't try and protect God. Stand up for Him. But don't protect Him. He doesn't need protecting just by the way. I've seen many Christians think they need to protect God. And they will fight vehemently. You missed the whole point then. Because our fight is not against flesh and blood. Hello? It is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers. And the darkness and the wickedness of this world. I've heard many people say, and when you share with them this, or you talk about salvation, who of you have heard people say, but how arrogant do you think you are th saying that, you know, you are the, Christianity is the only way? Who of you have had that said to you? Many of us. Who are you to say that Christianity is the only way? God said he's the only way. That's why we have the right to say that. How will we live and follow God is a gauge of how much we value our salvation. How you live, how you follow God, and how you live your daily lives shows people how much you really value your salvation. You don't even have to say it. Your lifestyle displays it. What would you be willing to pay for your salvation, church? Hmm? What are you willing to pay? Spending a bit of time with him? Talking to him? Sharing the gospel? What are you willing to pay? Your life. You're willing to lay down your life. That's what it requires. 1 Timothy 4 verse 8. I love this scripture. And so desperately needed in this day and age. For physical training is of some value. Yes. Hello, let's be honest. Is it of some value to exercise and pump iron and jog? And is it of some value? Why? Because it keeps you healthy and maybe for some keeps you a little bit trimmer, etc. Right, there's some value in it. Let's be honest with one another. However, listen to this. But godliness has value for all things. Holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Not just the present life. Physical exercise is great and you're welcome to do it. I encourage you to do it. But I do not encourage you to do it to the expense of your relationship with God. No, I do not. Then I would rather you invest here. Hello? And I know many people, they spend hours upon hours upon the physique and the exercising, but they spend no time with God. And I ask you, how much do you really value your salvation? How much do I really value my salvation? Let's be honest. How you spend your time shows you what you value. So, those of you that are spending hours and hours on your physical exercise for the temporary here and now, and no time with God and your relationship with Him, may that be a rebuke. <laughs> may you accept that and say, Lord, forgive me, I hear now <laughs> from, I, from this day forth value my salvation and will invest more time with you. Don't stop exercising. Just value your salvation more. Amen? Amen. Matthew eleven twenty four says, But I tell you that it will be more bearable, on the on, on bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. It will be more bearable 
for those, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Who knows? Can you help me? Hey? It got burnt down with sulfur. It was like, yes, it was like a nuke. It was like an atomic bomb, right? It will be more bearable for them than for those that reject the great salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ one day. More bearable. Wow. Why? Because their pain and their agony will not just be gone. It will be eternal. Day to day. Forever. Do you understand why the Bible says make sure that no one's blood is on your hands. If God has placed certain people on our path to share the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with them, we keep quiet. Their blood might be on our hands. Make sure that no one's blood is on your hands. Amen? <coughs> How many of you believe that we should be tolerant with other people who believe? for wisdom. Hello. Okay. Sorry? We what? The, the, this whole thing of, of tolerance and acceptance is, is hitting the, the world. It's rife. But tolerance is evil. It is sick. It is unscriptural. Nowhere are you and I, nowhere in Scripture does it say that we are to be tolerant. Nowhere. Tolerance is propagated that all beliefs, all values, All true, all, all belief systems. And all uh, claims to truth are equal. That is what tolerance is. And that's what they propaga propagate. In other words, if you think this is true and I think this is true, they are of equal value. Therefore, I need to be tolerable. But no one can be totally tolerable. No one. Do you know that? Because the minute you make a moral decision, you're intolerable. I do not believe that you and I as Christians are called to be tolerable. We were never called by in any way in Scripture. To be tolerable. What we were called is to love all people. Yeah, but then you're looking at different terminologies. You see, the thing is, they are propagating that any any uh, belief system, any value, any claim to truth, uh, stand on the same level. In other words, the minute I say my belief system is better or superior and yours is lesser than mine, I'm intolerable. And they, I, they, brought, they started propagating this to try and bring about world peace. But I believe their modus operandi and the, the main reason why they preached and, uh, and why they started propagating this is to, to make sure that we, they marginalize Christianity. Because with the one religion that says there is only one way back to the Father, and that is through Christ Jesus. Let me, let me share on that. The Bible says that I am to love all of mankind. It doesn't mean even my enemies, but it does not mean 
that I need to believe or agree with their lifestyle or their belief system or believe that their values are on a par with mine or their claims to truth are on a par with mine. It cannot be. Because if you do ascribe to that, then a truth and a lie are equal. Hello? Think about it logically. Yes. No, what you do is you are showing love and you're showing her honor and you're showing her respect. I respect what you believe. I do not agree with what you believe. And this is what they're trying to, they are trying to bring us and, 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 and uh, they're trying to basically say that we as Christians are intolerant people, which is not the truth. The, the truth is that we love all people and we will honor, I honor what a Muslim believes, I respect their beliefs, I certainly do not agree with them. And I never will. And I will cert certainly never propagate that their belief system and my belief system are on uh, even kiln, even playing field. They're not. Yes, and uh, that is crucial. You cannot compromise on the truth. The minute you compromise on the truth, you no, no longer stand for anything. If you don't stand for God, you don't stand for anything or anyone. You stand for Satan then. He who is for me, stands for me. He who does not stand for me is for Satan. Simple as that. Yes. Yeah, that's where they're going to. They want us to get to that point. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, I don't need salvation. If there's no sin, what do I need salvation for? That's what they want the world to believe. And it's been propagated at a rate of knots. They still support the justice system. Yes. They've, uh, the justice system is based on biblical principle, but they've taken the scripture out of it. They've removed the Ten Commandments. The New Age is the one world guys have already written their own Ten Commandments. Go and search it. You'll find it very interesting. One of the things is to drop the world population. So... I don't know how many of you should be exterminated. <laughs> yes, Christine. Yes, all the time. Yeah. You are, there's a difference, guys. For me to, for me to uh, love someone out there, it means I honor them and I respect them as a created being of God. I do not agree necessarily with their lifestyle. I do not necessarily agree with their values. I do not necessarily agree what they claim to be the truth. For if it is contrary to Scripture and I'm to critique their lifestyle by the Word of God. 
if it's not in line with the word of God, I do not tolerate it. Hello? I still respect them. I still love them. I'm still there for them. But their belief system is not equal with mine. Their value system is not on a par with mine. And they need to be told that. And anyone that says that you're intolerant, you need to just say, but so are you. Because you feel that your morals and your standards and your ethics and your belief system are superior to mine. So you're intolerable yourself. Because no one, no one actually can be, no one, you, not one of us can live an, an intolerant uh, life. Not one of us. Because some, in some area you think that your way of doing things is superior to another. Finished. But you can live the Christian life. And may you and I live a Christian life that brings glory to God. May we, may we live a life in gratitude and thanksgiving to this great salvation that cost Christ Jesus, that cost God His one and only Son. May we never forget the incredible value of salvation. For it is worth more than the Ferrari back there. It is worth more than that Cezanne. Or that Pollock painting. I think I must get one of my kids. <laughs> my little babies and let him sign it. Maybe in a hundred years. <laughs> yes, the kids will be billionaires. What do you value your salvation? What value do you put it to it? Are you going to share it then? Are you going to share it with others? The free gift that you have received? May I encourage you and I to share the truth at the appropriate time. May I also say, make sure that you pick an apple when it's ripe and not when it's green. Don't force someone to come to God. <coughs> Don't do that. Win their trust, win their respect that you can speak into their life. That they will say, now I grasp and understand. And you know how you'll do it? Through your love. Yeah. They will know that you're a Christian by your love. Not by your intelligence. Certainly not by your arrogance. Not by your criticism either. Hello? Mori? Not by our criticism. And we're not, we're not there to say, you stupid idiot, how can you believe this nonsense? We to gently share the truth. In love. That's how you win people. Way. Amen. Come, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. And forgive us where we have forgot the incredible value of salvation. We will not ignore this great salvation. But we will with open arms take hold of you. We will with open arms thank you on a daily basis. On a minute by minute basis. We will show our love and adoration and thanksgiving to you as a God that is understanding and loving and caring. That is compassionate. That is slow to anger. Thank you that by faith we can accept this free gift of salvation. And that we don't have to add anything to this great salvation. Thank you we don't have to live by a certain set of rules and regulations and do's and don'ts. Thank you that we've been called to love all of mankind. Help us to love the world out there. And as we love them with a love that is from you, that we would win them into your kingdom. And we pray that your kingdom would come here in Heinersburg and across the globe, just as it is in heaven. As we as your ambassadors do not shy back, but speak the truth in love. And make this world know that there truly is only one way back to the Father, and that is through the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We value you 
more than anything that we possess or ever will possess. And we once again devote our lives to you and you and afresh. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you all. Have a great week. Yeah.